are. Okay. So what does this tell us? Okay, so if a plus b root 2 can be written as a rational number, okay, well then, therefore, we must have b root 2, okay, must be equal to c over d, okay, minus a, okay. Now, if we just do some uh, some common denominator here, we must have that b root 2 must be equal to c minus a d uh, all over d, okay. Uh, now, what does this also tell us about the square root of 2? It says that the square root of 2, okay, must be equal to c minus a d all over b times d, okay? So, actually, the square root of 2 is equal to this particular number. Based off this particular assumption that we've made, that a plus b root 2, okay, uh, based off this number being able to be written as a rational number, okay, c over d, okay, based off that and through, through some deduction, we have that the square root of 2 can be written in this particular form here. But let's remember, okay, let's remember, remember, okay, our choice. Air choice of A and B and air choice of C and D, okay? So remember that A, B, C and D are elements of the integers, okay? Where, and also, uh, B, is, B is not equal to zero and D is a D and D is not equal to zero, okay? But A, B, C and D are effectively integers, okay? Which basically means, okay, well, what we have here is we have the product of two integers, a times d, which must be an integer. c is an integer, so an integer minus an integer is an integer. And b times d, which ain't equal to zero because b isn't zero and neither is d equal to, isn't zero. So b times d is not zero, but b times d is the product of two integers, so that gives us an integer, okay? So from this particular fact, what we actually have here is an integer, okay? Which, sorry, not an integer, a rational, a rational number, okay? We have a fraction, we have a rational number. So, under, from our initial, initial assumption uh, that a plus b root 2, okay, can be written as a rational number, what we've arrived at is the fact that the square root of 2 is, in fact, a rational number, okay? Which is a contradiction, a contradiction, okay? That's important. We've actually arrived at a particular contradiction. Earlier on, in one of our earlier proofs, we've shown that the square root of 2 is, in fact, an irrational, an irrational number. Okay? It's an irrational number. But what we've shown through our assumption here is that the square root of 2 actually can be written as a fraction or written as a rational number, which is a contradiction. This cannot be the case. We've shown it to be irrational. But more importantly, okay, we're free... When we consider a plus b root 2, okay, we're free to choose whatever a's and b's we want, once b is not equal to 0, from the set of integers, okay, which is a countably infinite set, okay. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have that the a's and b's, yeah, that there's an infinite number of choices for a's and b's, a countably infinite number of choices, okay. So actually what we've just done here is we've constructed another number, and we've actually shown that a plus b root 2 is, in fact, an irrational number, okay? So, a plus b root 2 is, in fact, an irrational number, uh, and we have an infinite number of these choices. So, what we can actually, the consequence of this is that the set of irrational numbers does contain an infinite number of numbers, okay, that are, in fact, irrational, okay? But we've only shown that they're countable because the a and b choice has come from z, which is a countable set. So really what we have now is we've shown that there are an infinite number of irrational numbers. Uh, okay guys, uh, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and I hope that this video was in some way intuitive and more importantly I actually hope that was helpful for you and thanks for watching.